Well, I mean, for me, I've actually been here in Hong Kong for more than 50 years. <laughs> and so I've seen the different changes in administration pre-97, before 97. And of course, during 97, um, after 97, I mean, I was at the ceremony uh, the night uh, in, 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 uh, in the convention center, actually, when uh, at that time, President uh, Jiang Jiemin came and Prince Charles was here to do the handover. <laughs> So it was very special, Hong Kong going back to China. Uh, no country has ever done that. It was part of history. And so, I, and, and I've been in China for 45 years. I had my first office in Changsha, Hunan. So I saw the changes taking place in China as well. I developed a strong admiration, a, small, a strong trust for China. Knowing the old China, to where it is today. It's like two different countries. <laughs> but I watched the people, I have businesses in China, and I watched the life of my staff get better and better and better. And so this 25 years is very, very special. It's the halfway point between 2047 yes. and 1997. And, and uh, I was actually invited uh, last year uh, to uh, Beijing for the 100th anniversary of the birth of the, Chinese, uh, China, uh, of the Chinese Communist Party. And again, I was the only Western face <laughs> there. It was a very, very special time. I developed a very strong love for China. And even in 2008, I changed my passport. <laughs> I had a Canadian passport and I became Chinese and that's the only passport I have because in my heart even though I'm white on the outside <laughs> I'm a yellow on the inside I have a, 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 um, a feeling a feeling I feel more Chinese than I do Western but I understand both cultures I keep seeing China get better and better it's the fastest growing economy in the world Hong Kong's strength is being part of China. Hong Kong is the super connector between the West and the East and the East and the West. One country, two systems is something that pre-97, uh, in the 80s, uh, Deng Xiaoping came up with uh, because people in Hong Kong were nervous. Oh my God. People never like change. Everywhere in the world, <laughs> people at change, hard time to accept it. They like status quo. <laughs> That's human nature. So obviously Deng Xiaoping came up with this one country, two systems, and this was never done anywhere in the world before. And so I believe that uh, Hong Kong is the experiment. And that's why we have the ups and the downs and the good and the bad, because there was no uh, playbook for it before, you know. But I think that one country, two systems has really made Hong Kong very, very, very strong. We're an international financial center, something that China must have for Hong Kong. They don't need, and I hear many stories all the time, oh, Hong Kong is losing its, its, its uh, the future is changing, you know. And China doesn't need another city of seven and a half million people to be a Chinese city. They need the one country, two systems to really um, help them to connect with the West. And Hong Kong is that special place, and we have, must keep that. Well, the 14th five-year plan, of course, China always works in five-year plans, and uh, it's really one of the first times that Hong Kong was really included in a strong way in the 14th five-year plan. The importance of Hong Kong, we have the common law system here, which China has a civil law. Common law is what many of the world um, countries really practice in the legal system. We have an independent judiciary. This brings a big trust for businesses wanting to do business in China. And so that's why we have so many head offices in Hong Kong. That's something that I've watched Hong Kong grow from before uh, being uh, uh, just uh, the factory. <laughs> All the factories were in Hong Kong. And, 
And, and then I saw them move to China, many of the factories, and Hong Kong became, uh, social services became very, very important. A service center, you know, financial services, uh, very, very important. Every head office has to be in Hong Kong. And I've watched Hong Kong grow, uh, really with the help of China. It, people are here, companies are here, not because Hong Kong, Hong Kong is a beautiful place. It's very small. They're not here to do business with Hong Kong. They're here to do business with China. And I know many Western countries have tried to destroy the brand and tried to give us a bad name and change, you know, say, oh, you're not a special economic zone anymore. We, U.S., uh, during Trump's years, uh, you know, decided that uh, Hong Kong, we have to uh, take away all the special privileges, the trade privileges and whatever. Not a problem. We, have, we will survive because of China and that's the strength and that's when you ask me the 25 years how important it is because uh, I've seen Hong Kong just go through many many difficult periods sometimes of good periods sometimes but we always come out we always rebound very very well together with China and only because China is going is, is doing so well in the world and and really I've watched the changes happening in China, the technology, Shenzhen. I was there when Shenzhen was just field, <laughs> really. And, 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 and then Deng Xiaoping came and said, this will be a special economic zone. And I thought to myself, there's no way, <laughs> not possible. But yet, um, today, Shenzhen to me is one of the best uh, technological cities in the world you know, the innovation that they keep coming up with. And, and, and uh, Hong Kong, of course, we're now being part of it in, in, in the 14th five-year plan. China was very strong on technology. That's one of the weaknesses of Hong Kong. But in the 14th five-year plan, that was, uh, it was very important that Shenzhen and Hong Kong become brother and sister and really work on technology to make that uh, a very, very important thing. The other thing that, that for Hong Kong in the 14th five-year plan is the GBA, the Greater Bay Area. This is something that is so important uh, because you're talking about one and a half hour radius, 11 cities, Hong Kong, Macau, uh, Shenzhen, and Guangzhou are the four key cities, and the other seven cities are the peripheral, peripheral cities in the Guangdong, in the, in the Pro River Delta. and. By high-speed rail, it's one and a half hours from everywhere, from Hong Kong to Shenzhen today. Hong Kong Shenzhen is 14 minutes on the train. Faster to go to Shenzhen than for me to go from my office to my house on the south side in Hong Kong. And so everything starts to change, you know. Many young people will then go to the Greater Bay Area in order to make their fortune. And you know, and, and also housing is a big, big problem in Hong Kong. I believe that we need to solve that problem, maybe with the Northern Metropolis. There's a lot more land now. We can uh, attack the, the housing problem uh, and, and make young people and old people feel happy. There's a lot of people who were not, not happy because their life was difficult. The rents were so expensive. They lived in small houses. Some lived in subdivided flats. Um, and my staff in China have a better house, have a, a bigger car, they live better. You know, the system really does work. And so Hong Kong is changing now. And I believe that uh, it'll get stronger and stronger. And that affiliation of people, uh, the more you travel to China, the more you get to respect the country and love the country. Mm -hmm.